We are just a few weeks away from the Civ Give on December 11th and just a couple of days away from the Civ Give draft on November 26th this weekend at 12 o'clock Pacific. If you would like to donate to Gamers Outreach to help me reach $10,000 for this wonderful, wonderful charity as part of the Civ Give, that link is in the description below. We also have merch at vbmerch.com where all of the proceeds are being donated to Gamers Outreach. Right now, it's about 50% of what you spend on the merch is getting donated, which is awesome. So that's that is there for you. Now it's time for Abe Lincoln. Hello YouTube, Bradley here, and today there's no Twitch. It's just you and I and a game of Civilization. We're gonna play that Civilization game with Abraham Lincoln from the new DLC Leaders Pass. Abraham Lincoln has a goofy hat and some very fun abilities. Industrial zones give plus three loyalty per turn and plantations give minus two loyalty. Up the industrial zones, boo the plantations. Receive a free melee unit after constructing industrial zones and their buildings. This is gonna be the strat. Get industrial zones, they give us units, we kill people. One, two, three, four can be profit, I don't know. The free unit does not require resources when created or to maintain, and it has extra five combat strength. Combine that with Himiko, maybe? Get a great general out there, we are going to be ballin'. Right about now, the game details will be appearing on screen if you would like to follow along with this game and actually play the same map. If you head to our Discord server in the description, the save files will be there for you to download. We have a wonderful start here. We are not playing with better balance starts. This is our natural, baby. And we got a new, we got a new world map though. So lots of hills to, to mine and stuff. We want those industrial zones. So we're gonna settle right here. Good old Washington, it's gonna be glorious. And then I suppose we're just gonna settle or move up to the north and build a scout and get this thing rolling. We are gonna wanna start with horses because we need to kind of shoot through straight to apprenticeship. We're gonna try and get the boost along the way. We gotta build three mines, get a trade route, build a pasture, all that kind of stuff. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. But let's get a scout. We got city states to first meet for the extra yields. We got civs to meet. We got places to see people to be. I don't know how that saying goes, but we're we're doing it. I'm gonna keep my warrior on this side of the river, but we're gonna keep on going here. These banana tiles are great. The only problem is I don't wanna build plantations as Washington to lose the loyalty. It'll probably be fine in our main cities, but on the cities on the outskirts, it might be a problem, especially in cities that we take over from domination. Uh, things like uh, camps on the honey though will be great. Oh boy, okay, interesting. Ooh, I see it. I see something. I see him. Okay, we got him. We got him. Hopefully that's a first meet. Woo! Candy! That is a first meet. That is Owls of Minerva too. I don't think we're gonna go Owls this game. I much prefer to have vampires, although we do get an extra wildcard policy slot at some point, which will be good for us. For this early governor, you kind of have two good options. Normally you'd want to go Pingala for sure, especially on Deity with the extra culture and the extra science, but Magnus with the amount of chops in our city would be a good shout as well. Uh, because we gotta keep up, I am gonna go for Pingala, but I might regret that over time. Gonna send my scout in the other direction and see what's crack -a Um, No, here's the debate, here's the debate. Two scouts or a slinger? And I think we go with the slinger. I get too worried, especially because I'm recording this for YouTube. I get too worried if I don't build a slinger, I'm gonna get absolutely bamboozled. We also already got a first meet of a city state and you know, you wanna meet three city states, but if you can get one first meet, that's still huge. We, we already kind of got that, so I think we'll be okay. Over down here, we have a goodie hut and a second continent, which is super cool for us. So continent split means more luxury resources, some era score for settling. That should be great. We got some barbs up here to try and kill as well. Hopefully to get vampires. Um, can I attack? Nah, not quite yet. I'm gonna wait for Code of Laws to come in. All right, please give me a relic. Please give me a relic. Please give me a relic. Okay, hi, Grand Columbia. You're not a relic. You actually are a big murdery boy. Please don't kill me. I come in peace, sir. Uh, we discovered Mulan. That's certainly helpful. And we discovered Void Singers. And we boosted writing. What did we get from the Goody Hut? It's not faith, it's not gold. Villagers bring gifts. We got a population, hell yeah. That's that's really good. We like a population. It's not the best one, certainly not the worst. And Papa Yan, I am, I'm worried, but I am kind of happy that Lake Tota is separating this. No All right, give me a relic, give me a relic, give me a relic, or a builder. You know what, a builder in this city is gonna be popping. Oh, why are these all plantations? That really sucks. An envoy, that's pretty good. That'll be an early candy, Suze, if we want it. I'll scout with the Slinger for now, and we'll see if Grand Columbia wants to come murder us. This really sucks for them, though. I'm not sure exactly how much of my time I want to waste going down here, when really what I want to do is just go straight for industrial zones, but I suspect going mining into 
encampments is going to be pretty helpful for the great general points. I'm going to build a settler here. There is some good land to settle, specifically this city up here. This would be a great Petra city if we can get some early grade engineers. And then over here is a really good coastal city, it looks like. So we'll try and make something work up in the back end here. If we get a city here that can give us loyalty in the cap as well, we can probably get some of these plantations without feeling the heat too much, you know? One of the things you can always do is take advantage of the fact that the barbs can't heal and you can. So you can just fortify until you heal up a little bit. Candy is helping me take this guy out. Next turn, we got Code of Laws. Things are going super well. Gonna zoom towards the Pantheon, get discipline in to kill some barbs, and I think that's it. I don't want my scout to go too far away, but this is looking like good land to potentially settle. So I do want to know what my options are, because this land here, I'm always going to be able to get, it looks like. But this land might be contested by someone over here, so I might want to zip a settler over to this tile. Another 2-2 settle with some good tiles around might be nice. All right, team, I think I messed this up. Please do not kill this barbarian candy. Please, please, please. Oh, cool. I did not mess this up. That's great. Uh, oh, I did kind of mess this up, though, because then this warrior will kill me. I saved my other envoy. So now we have two envoys. Is that true? That's not true. Oh, I gained an envoy from Mohenjo Daro. Just kidding. Just kidding. I got a first meet on Mohenjo here. Now I kind of definitely want to come settle here, else Mohenjo will just grow into this. Mohenjo Daro is the much better sieve to have than Candy as a suzerain. So we'll see how this goes for us. The problem is with barb clans is you need two turns, one to go in and then one to raid it. So if I go in, then this guy will kill me before I can actually raid it. So that's going to be a problem. I think I have no choice but to fortify here and see what they do. Yeah, we got bamboozled. That's too bad. We did find another goodie hut though. Please be a relic. Oh, two envoys. Okay. I want to go for the Mohenjo Suze, but I don't want to Suze it until I'm settled over here because then it'll grow. Yeah, I definitely want to settle this tile right here to get this city down. One, two, three. Can I do that? No, that's the wrong button. Uh, I can't. Dang it, dang it, dang it. It's too close. One, two. Yeah, man. Although, hear me out. The ability of Mohenjo Daro is your cities have full housing from water as if they were all next to a river. So if we suze Mohenjo Daro, we can actually settle kind of in the middle and make use of all these tiles without having to settle on the river, which might be the best way to approach this. All right, so this isn't perfect, and there's probably a few ways to rejig this, but I got like a little bit of a plan here. If we suze here, we can get quite a few mines, so I'm thinking this might make a decent River Valley City. Uh, that way we can hedge against the space race if domination doesn't work out for us. We can get a pretty good early government plaza, some decent industrial zones. This is actually in the wrong order. Come on, BB, you've got this. You've got this, my guy. There we go. That's a lot better. Some decent industrial zones that we're going to build as well. So I think this might be the best way for us to approach this. We also get the aqueduct at some point to hedge against Mohenjo Daro not being soothed anymore. So I think this is the plan we're going to go with until I find out that this is actually terrible. Well, good news, folks. Candy is very silly and didn't kill the barb camp. So we got to. So that's exciting. We got a promotion. We get a free kill. I'm actually going to bring the slinger back. I don't want to die. It's time to clear the camp. Mwah! Yeah! Big party. We did it. We're going to go vampires this game. Owls and Minerva might be better, especially with all these city states to trade to. But vampires are just so fun, hey? We can now choose our pantheon. I'm not sure what the best option here is. As a kind of military focused civ, I would love to get God of Craftsmen. I find that to be quite helpful. There's a few decent options as well. I don't want to get the plantation option because I might be chopping a lot of these resources like the bananas and stuff just so I can't be tempted. Um, but let's take a look through here and see what we got. Yeah, there's not a ton of great options. I'm going to go God of Craftsmen. That'll immediately get us something on these horses at the very least. And then as we unlock more and more iron and niter and coal, we'll get that as well. I want to make sure before I settle the city, I am going to get the Mohenjo Daro Suze, or else this is going to be a very silly choice. Otherwise, things are looking well. So far, my only problems is I have no planned encampments because I don't want to waste the government plaza. But I do want a great general, so that's a bit of an issue. And space. There's a lot of city-states in our way. I think we might have to kill Preslov at some point. All right, so here's the play. We are going to settle this city here, and then we are going to Suze Mohenjo Daro, but only after we purchase... I really hope it takes this rice tile. It might not, though. It might take this horses. That's fine as well. But just to hedge my bet here, we are going to purchase this 2-2 tile just to see what it takes. If it takes this tile, that's fine, but I definitely want these mine tiles. Anyways... Let's go and do that and see what happens. Mount Vesuvius is there too. Holy hell, that's fun. 
And we got Beowulf. And we got Hermetic Order. Interesting. And it did take the rice and the horses and whatnot. So that's perfect. If we just double check our housing, we are getting five housing in this city, which means Mohenjo-Daro is working as intended. We are going to go settle Mount Vesuvius, though. That's going to be super fun. Oh, and these barbs just make it oh so easy. Look at that. Just kill it. Oh, perfect. Now we can get archery earlier. This is going swell. For the Slinger, I'm going to choose the Garrison Promotion. While I appreciate Volley and might be helpful in the long run, we have heroes in this game and they can be pretty offensive. So I'm going to go with the really good defensive kind of inside the capital city option for defense in case Grand Columbia decides they want to murder us at any point. We have collected 20 horses because we, I guess, settled on horses or something and then they appeared later. So I'm going to try and sell those. I'm using the Quick Deals mod. If you don't have this mod, it's the single best mod in Civ. I can just do this. Uh, Grand Columbia is going to give us 7 gold for 30 turns. That's one one horse unit for 7 gold for 30 turns is, is a huge good deal for us. So we're going to definitely do that. And then we'll be able to buy a builder soon. This is where I really love having a live Twitch chat because now I can't choose what I want to do here. You definitely, we're going to need to keep going down Pingala before we get vampires. But Owls of Minerva can be very helpful right now if we're going to go for it because it will give us an extra yellow policy card slot. I'm almost finished with this settler and I'm not going to build another one till the government plaza is done. And so we won't need colonization for now. But man, having two of these cards would be very, very nice. We are still kind of killing barbs, so I think this still feels okay. I think we're just going to have to go Pingala Culture because then we'll get an extra, it's almost double, right? Like three, I guess it's a third, 33% more culture, like almost three or four per turn, which will get us to a government more quickly, which I think is helpful. If you know anything about me, you know I'm going to build the Oracle in any game I can. So we're going for it and I don't really care. We are going to improve three tiles and I'm sure of this because we need to get three mines to get to the mining or the uh, industrial zones anyway. So that'll be fine to take into right after this with the builder that we purchase. The next strategy I need to have is to make Grand Columbia like us for now, or just to get a trader out for the potential hours of Minerva later. So we are going to grab a trader. I would normally buy one, but we're buying a builder. We had to buy this tile, which kind of sucked, but that's okay. I really do want Beowulf. I'm going to hold out for Hercules or Himiko because both are better, I think. But if we do go to war with Grand Columbia early on, I will be getting Beowulf to help me out. For now, though, I'm going to go for another builder because I am going to want to chop a few things out to grab this oracle and getting a builder will help with that. We can now afford our builder, which is perfect. We will use it to grab the horses. We'll probably grab one of the two plantations for now, and then we'll start building our mines. We'll get one of the three mines for our boost. I'm the only one with envoys in Mohenjo-Daro. I don't want to put another one in here because then it'll gain more tiles, and I really don't want that till I can buy them up. So I'm just going to either save this or we can put it in Cardiff for now, which will give us a little more production. So I suppose we'll do that. My man is a good deal maker. Look at that open borders. I'm just trying to scout around to see. I just need to see what the enemy, what their empire looks like, you know. I don't have many options for building the Oracle, so I am going to build it here. The main thing the Oracle is going to do for us is once we get the Oracle and Pingala with grants, any district we build in the city is going to get a lot of great person points. And that's super important for the industrial zone. So we get all the good wonder great engineers for later. Not the worst to be in a standard age for the classical era. That's totally fine. We are going to grab free inquiry for now and see how that goes for us. But I think I think we should be good. We're also going to settle on this tile right here, this stone tile. You have to be within two tiles of the city to get the boost. So I think we're going to do that. I would do another cheeky thing where I settle in the middle and take up all this land. But I think I am going to want one or two more cities up here if domination doesn't go our way. So I don't want to take up all the room, you know. And there's our era score for settling next to Mount Vesuvius. Look at that. Man, there is so much land up here. Like so much land. I wonder if there's another sieve up here. If not, we if not, we can really hunker down for a great science game here. I feel like this is the moment. If we're getting vampires, we got to get vampires. And I feel like Owls of Minerva is probably better. But even with vampires, look at all this awesome space we have for vampire castles. I think we're going to be able to build Washington into a massive powerhouse here. So I'm going to go for Sanguine Pact. And there's our cheeky little vampire. Let me know in the comments what you would name your, your cheeky little vampire if you could. I am desperately trying to find another barbarian at the moment because we didn't end up killing three and I would really like that boost. All right, I don't think it's happening for us. I don't think we're going to kill three barbs, which is unfortunate, but we do have our first government here. Classical Republic is the one I definitely want to go into at some point here. Um, right now, getting oligarchy might be helpful, but I don't think it actually really matters because... We're not in a melee or anything right now. So we're not fighting anyone. So I don't know if oligarchy matters. And I think I can make better use of this. 
plus 10 percent no 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 sorry we're gonna do autocracy for the wonder production then into classical republic because i do want that wonder production for sure i can then put corvi in to doubly help me build the oracle which is going to be nice we are still kind of fighting barbs i'm not really building anything else so that's fine and then we will go for charismatic leader to start getting some more envoys I'm doing my best to rush straight to apprenticeship. I think I should be able to get there after currency. I can just boost up here. And then once I need anything, if I need holy sites or irrigation or whatever, I'll come back to that. But I really just want to get right up to apprenticeship. To do that, my next governor title is going to go to researcher as well, which will give me an extra four or five science a turn, which should get us there pretty quickly. Good news, folks. There's a goodie head up here, which means there's not a ton of sieves up here. So this should be nice and easy. I think we might pivot to a science game with just a taste of killing Grand Columbia because there's no one else around either. This is a Pangea map, so I don't know where anyone is. And again, it's not better balanced starts. So this is just this is just how the game gives it to you. For those of you who aren't quite as familiar with chops and how they work, if I check here and I chop a rainforest, I'm going to get 21 production and 21 food. If I go into my queue, though, I want that to go towards the campus that's going to go down here. So I don't want it to go towards the granary. So I've just taken the granary out of the queue. If I go and I chop my 21 production, it'll then go to the next thing I place down, which will be my campus right here. It's only a plus one for now, but once we set this whole thing up, it will be a plus three. And give me a relic, give me a relic. No, that's not a relic. That's actually really bad. I hate this game. How much production do we have left? We have about 70 production left. How much are these chops worth? 21 a piece of so 42. Once we have 42 production left in the Oracle, we're going to double chop it out, baby. All right, it's not perfect, but it is close enough. Here we go. And it is perfect. We've got the Oracle. Let's go. Pray to me. Oh, it's beautiful. I promise. I made a promise to my my team VB a while ago that I would always let you see all the good stuff here. Look at that construction animation. I remember sometimes someone commented on you. They, they were very mad at Bose for skipping the animations. And ever since that comment, I was like, I'm not going to do that. Call, call me the anti-Bose. Look at that. Just kidding. Bose is lovely. I met Bose in real life. If you guys didn't know that, I met Bose in real life in San Diego for TwitchCon. It was glorious. Next up, Government Plaza. I'm going to put the Government Plaza down. Then after the Government Plaza goes down, I'm going to grab some more settlers. It's going to be great. So we do have enough loyalty for one or two um, plantations in the capital without ever being worried about it. So I think we're going to do that. The Government Plaza gives us plus eight loyalty, so we can take these two plantations and not be, not be too worried about it. Plantation numero un. And plantation, duh, now look at us, so many amenities, a little bit of gold, a little bit more gold, we, got, we just got gold, we got gold and amenities, that's what we're all about over here. I think a granary would help you mightily. We also have 345 gold, gotta decide when to spend it, I don't like buying builders until I can get the card that gives them extra build charges though, so we might be holding off just a bit. I would love to preemptively seuss Cardiff for the industrial zone boost later, but mostly because it's in a good location, I'm never going to be able to settle here, and it does help me defend against Grand Columbia if I needed to. Get a levy sneak in from the back. And Wukong. Wukong is very good. What I want is Hercules or Himiko, but Wukong is fun too. For those of you who don't really know how this works, I am going to put this campus down here. But what I can do is I can place the campus down. It'll place it down. That locks in the production at 122. Then I can move to build something else, like Ancestral Hall, if I want to. I think in this case, I do want to finish this campus. That'll allow me to buy the library. And then I can collect all of these great scientist points from Pingala and Oracle. And then I'll settle these cities. It's a little bit of a play for, get, for more science. We are delaying our cities a little bit, but I think overall we'll be fine. Researchers coming in, that's going to give... Yeah, we don't even have grants yet, so it's fine. Re Researcher is important to get to the industrial zone, so that's perfect. First campus is finished. That's plus three era score, which is awesome. So this guy's already buffed up by everything, so that's perfect. And that's a really good campus in there. It's not getting the Oracle or the Pingala buff because it's not in that city, but that's a good place to start. I can also just buy the library, but I want to purchase the other one. So I think I might actually build a settler in here just to get another settler being produced not every settler needs to be perfect and i think by the time i do this i'll have the ancestral hall by the time this gets built and out to a spot to settle i'll already have the ancestral hall so i will get the free builder which is what i'm aiming for i honestly have no idea where anyone is i swear to you i'm on deity i swear to you i've not taken anybody off this map this is a normal standard size map I, do I don't know what's going on i'm not mad about it i'm not mad about it i'm having a great time i just don't know where the people are 
I know it might be a problem that I'm giving iron to the person who I will be fighting, but I think between heroes and the free units I'm getting, I should be okay. So I think I'm going to sell this for seven gold per 30 here. And that'll allow me to get a builder here to chop some of this stuff out, put a couple mines down, get this just a little quicker for this two campus boost, which I think is overall pretty worth it. Hey, Trajan, it's not the new Rome. It's not the new Rome. It's not Caesar, but it is Trajan. That's cool. That's fine. Do you like stuff? Do you like horses? I'd love to. No, no, not as a gift. Okay, I'm in the wrong screen. I'm in the wrong screen. Look, do you like horses? No. Do you like Diplo favor? Also, no. What do you like? You suck, man. I hate you. Oh, Spain. Do you like? <laughs> Hello, stranger. Do you like stuff? Do you like horses? I'm in the wrong screen again. Come on, VB. You got this. Uh, you like horses more than the last guy. 19 for 47 gold. I'll take that. And this? Do you like this kind of stuff? Okay, you hate this kind of stuff. Cool. Awesome. Good to know. Happy to meet you. Chop out the campus. That's going to get this boost right on time, which is perfect. Then I'll buy the library. Then we'll get an ancestral hall, build some settlers, put down the industrial zone. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bang, bada bong. Bada beep. That's a really bad deal, but I do need this cash gold. So I'll, I'll give it just because I need to get to the library cost, you know? You feel? Perfect. Now I can slide this into the wonder card slot, which is perfect. Um, What else do I need to be putting in here? There's got to be something else I can put in, hey? It's got to be production towards settlers because I am building a settler. And if that don't make no sense, then I ain't making no sense at all. So let's do that. I, I became from Arkansas for a second there. And we're not even fighting any barbs. Are we fighting any barbs now? Double experience for our scouty boy, I think. All right, we have grants now, plus 100% great people points. That's going to synergize with the Oracle, which gives us lots of great person points. Let's see how many great scientist points we're going to get per turn next turn without the library. So without the library, man, people are already on it. This sucks. Without the library, it was seven? Is that right? Was it really seven? Spain is already getting 28. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Everyone else we're, we're ahead of. Once we get the library, we're kind of ahead of everyone else. But yeah, seven, seven's the number. I'm going to buy that library, though. Oh, boy. This is going to be a struggle. All right, everybody. The moment hath arrived. We will be able to build Industrial Zone shortly. The only problem is that I... Oh, and we'll get free man of arms for doing it. The only problem is that I don't have enough population here. And I'm going to need to build some settlers here. So we're going to have to put it in New Orleans for now. Which is fine. It just doesn't get the great engineer boost quite yet. It is time for the industrial zone. I don't have a builder to chop out the rainforest, which is unfortunate, but that's okay because we're just going to build this bad boy and then we'll, we'll grab the granary and everything else we need after. What's important is the man at arms. With the man at arms, we are, we are, we are going to kill Preslav or one of these cities. I think we might go to war here with Beowulf and some man at arms and see what we can do, but I think this rush is going to be fine down here. Oh boy, people do start liking Diplo Favor. I can sell 102 of these bad boys for 112 gold straight up and 14 gold per turn for 30 turns. So I am going to do that indeed. We're going to take this settler and settle this little coastal boy right here. I do want to wait to see if I get Emotep before I do the Mojave Desert play. And there's obviously there's a ton of good settles around here. And since we have Mohenjo Daro, we can settle kind of just in the middle. But here I do want at least one coastal city. I think it's hilarious that we're going to get free man at arms before we get the swordsman at all, but you know what? Who cares? Didissimas tu oregano! I think the next governor is going to be Magnus. We have so many available chops, in New Orleans especially, but just in this city as well. Uh, there's a lot of cities around here that have some chops. I think, I think Magnus is going to do a job for us here. Let's settle the city. We then have a pretty interesting choice to make. So we're going to sell right here. That's going to boost sailing, which is super nice. We're going to get a free builder because of Ancestral Hall. So we can choose how to use that builder. Probably we'll go get some fishing boats, but that's totally fine. We do have a choice here because we do have another governor title. And if I go into provision, settlers trained in the city do not consume a population. So that seems like a pretty obvious pick, especially because we do want to keep our population up in Washington. Washington, but Washington is the city that can build all the settlers. But, but if I move Pingala out of here and move it to New Orleans, it takes five turns to move over there. So we lose out on six science and six culture per turn for those five turns. So it's just a little bit tricky. I think that's what I'm going to do though, is promote Magnus to provision and then put Magnus in the city in Washington here. 
And then we'll move Pingala to New Orleans or New York. Oh, but Pingala's got to stay for the Oracle. Never mind. Never mind. This isn't going to work. Pingala's got to stay for the Oracle. Uh, the, the governor goes right back in if it's the same turn. So we are just going to have to move Magnus here. I'll still use this ability to build settlers in New Orleans, but it's not quite as good. I overthought that. But now you got to look at what VB thinks about in real time instead of in his head. How cool was that? Another day, another library. So that's perfect there. More science, more great scientist points. We do need to try and find a way to get this era score. We can get it but first by grabbing a hero, which would be super helpful. So that might be on the docket. Um, next, I'm not really sure. We kind of used all of our easy peasy sources of, we can go down here and settle a city on another continent, but that's pretty hard to do. If we are going to go to war with Grand Columbia, it does need to be kind of right on this man-at-arms rush. Which means we are going to need a hero here, Beowulf, and that'll give us some era score for the next era. The problem is I don't want to get Beowulf and then have him disappear before the war's over. I think he's worth getting now. Wukong is great for pillaging, but Beowulf is way better for just deleting units off the map, which can sometimes feel pretty cheaty, but I think we're going to do it, especially because I certainly don't want him to snag up Beowulf, so maybe we'll just deny it from him. All right, please settle a city here. Yes, they settled a city here. Cartagena de India. It's a free city for us to take, so we are going to blitz down there with Beowulf, with hopefully a man at arms. We are going to get this mathematic boost, so let's tech out of that. We'll go for sailing and then into, the, yeah, harbors maybe. Because we'll get that boost too, so that should be totally fine. Man, things are looking up. Uh-oh, we are no longer the Sus of Mohenjo-Daro. They have seven envoys in here. What on earth happened? Yeah, the problem with that is that now New Orleans is not being helped because we don't have the aqueduct in yet. Oh, no. Although for era score, I do kind of need to go into Cardiff to get that era score. So we're going to have to catch up in Mohenjo. That's okay, though. The next problem there now, though, is if I declare war on my main man here, I got a Mohenjo man-at-arms rushing New Orleans, which is a huge issue. I'm not sure exactly how I'm getting the next two era score, but I am 100% sure that buying a galley here gives me two era scores. So we're going to do that. And now I have a galley in not Boston. Why would you spawn there? Why would you spawn there? Why would you not spawn in Boston where... You're, it's not even, it's closer here. This is a, this is a travesty. Now I can't even defend against this boat when I, I, I hate this game. I hate everything. I hate everything for access. Why you do me like this? Why you gotta do me like this? What am I gonna do with this galley? This is absurd. This is ridiculous. I ain't gonna be friends with Spain though for now. That's a good, that's good. What? I, uh all right, two error score. How are we getting it? Because two error score gets us into monumentality, which means I can put in this feudalism card and buy a bunch of builders. All right, I was able to make another deal with Katarja for our tea and three gold per turn for a bunch of gold or whatever she was able to give us. But now this will allow me to buy a horseman. I don't really want a horseman, but I'm going to buy the horseman because that'll give me error score for my first horse unit and will put us over the edge into a golden age. And there is our golden age heading into the medieval era. And Grand Columbia is in a dark age what a better there's no better time to murder him we're gonna have to murder him that's that's not a that's not a choice now we're gonna have to do that i'm actually gonna go with monumentality i'd love to buy some builders with faith when the opportunity arises so we will do that oh uh, yeah beowulf you just move a little bit oh and we got barbs to kill hell yeah love a barb to kill especially if it boosts my vampire the vampire is also gonna get a huge boost when we get this um what's it called because uh, the, the vampire strength goes up with your melee unit, so jumping to man-at-arms will give us that extra strength, which is super nice. First World Congress. I don't really care what goes on here, to be honest. I gave away all my points a long time ago. Double great engineer points would be great. Uh, 100 grievances. Simone Bolivar, please. I guess 50% less would have been better for us, but I'm speeding through this. Um, yeah, we're passing. I am going to betray you, but we are just passing by for now. We're not ready yet to declare war. Give us like two turns, mate. Come on. The only thing left for us to get before we go into proper war here is a battering ram. But by the time we take Karteng it's Kartagina to Indias, we should have a battering ram. There's lots of units down here, too, that aren't doing a whole lot. They'll have to come and kill Karta for something. That should be fine. I am. I am. We are going to get this boost, but it is only one turn. Now we're getting in two turns anyway. Let's we'll come down to wheel. Or own two galleys or something. I don't know. 
Now the problem is Mohenjo Daro will come and murder us right away once we declare war, and that is a pretty big issue. Oh baby, here we go. We got the industrial zone, which means we got a free man at arms. Get down here, get on the road. While you're waiting, Beowulf is gonna take Cartagena de Indias, and you know what that means, folks. You know what that means. This vampire is gonna be buffed up. Yeah, it is. It's super buffed up. That is awesome. It might even be more buff up, uh, buffed up next turn. How much is a... One second. Where's our dude? Where's our main man? There you are. 45 melee strength, and that's what the vampire now has. 49, because it gets some extra stuff, so that's totally good. I think we declare war. Folks, watching this video, the moment you have all been waiting for, we are declaring war on our main man, Grand Columbia, here. Surprise! Look at that. He had no idea what was happening. He didn't even have time to prepare. He's he's just, he's melting. Uh, I will keep the horse out of the way. I think the horse is dead. But everyone else is going to take the city and it's going to be glorious. One more turn until we can build another industrial zone here. For now, build the battering ram. I can then upgrade the archer instead. It's going to be great. That's awesome. Uh, let's get a granary and then a workshop right away. How much is a workshop? 780. Yeah, we're going to need that right away for another man at arms that'll be lovely look oh we have so much stuff going on you're gonna build a harbor this is just the best turn ever isn't it i still can't believe this galley spawned over here but whatever beggars can't be choosers nope that nah, rome's mad rome's like dog you can't surprise someone like that sooner or later you'll be surprising me in the senate building with a knife and i can't have that Ooh, two settlers for two sexy settles. I was gonna settle. Here's the problem. I was gonna settle in the middle here, but if we don't have Mahenjo Daro on our team, it's gonna be a real problem real fast. It is time to start the siege of Cartagena. I can't say this name. It doesn't really matter though, because I think we're gonna take it in two turns and we're gonna be able to keep it, which is super nice. I think we might need to build walls up here, which isn't super ideal, but that's fine. I am worried about this man at arms, and I don't think... We need two more envoys to kick them out. I can get one here at Naval Tradition. Oh, one here at Theology. We're going to do that for sure. Kill a unit with a Quadream probably isn't going to happen, though. Yeah, we'll do the one down there for sure if we can. Cleo! So that'll be two error score for the last one. So Cleo's someone we can kill later. That's fine. I think what I'll do is I'll kill this Cartagena, and then I'll teleport Beowulf back up to New Orleans will be what I do. And Guitarja hates us. That's fine. All right, they haven't attacked us yet. So I'm going back to the granary to, just to see if they'll attack us. I, I kind of want to know if they'll attack us. You're settling way up here. I would like, I still I still think I'm going to do this middle settle because we will get Mohenjo back eventually. Who's put Amani in there? Grand Columbia put Amani in there. That's a problem. Has Amani been in there for a while? Am I just imagining things? Yeah, it's already in there. Okay, so, that's, so they're actually a five in there and a money. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, well, let's do this then. That's all good. So we are going to take this city here, and then I'll just pillage the holy site to heal up the vampire, and then we will take a battering ram to Papa Yan and Karakas. Can I keep this city, though? I might have to move Magnus there. Rebellion in five. Rebellion in seven, and then if I move Magnus, it's enough turns. That's enough turns, I think. Oh, that's plus zero. That's perfect. Now, if we could get a builder here, and we can because we have monumentality, we can get a builder here. So we can. Oh, I can't get it. I can't get a plantation though. Um. Well, I can buy out these tiles, and chop out some population. Maybe. Is that the play? I grab one of those tiles. Ah, oh, no, because there's a catapult there. Should have been this tile. Oh, well. That's my bad. That's my bad, everyone. That's my bad. Bro, <laughs> Cardiff going in hot in Panama. They're going to have to defend Panama, which is a huge win for us. Because this battering ram is finished now. So it's going to come down. We now have a man at arms as well. Is this just ancient walls? Yeah, just ancient walls. So this should be nice and easy to kind of melt through. We're going to do it so Vampire goes in on the holy site, maybe? Vampire going in, this is the problem is there's this water tile here, but Karakas we can't keep. We gotta go to Papillon first, because that'll be the easier one to keep. I think you can go here and attack this way. You'll sneak in here for sure, so that'll work out just fine. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, everybody. 
man why does everyone hate me what did i do i just i know i'm a i know i'm a bad person for what i did to grand columbia okay now they're attacking me and that's a pretty big problem although not particularly quickly so i think i can build walls and then walls especially i'll put limes in and we will get those walls in time so that'll be cool and then i'll ship off some iron to spain for some gold that'll be great he's friends with me we don't have alliances yet or else i do a military alliance but that's all good so yeah, we just need to wait a second for the, yeah, for the, um, what am I trying to say here? I can't remember what I'm trying to say. Things are crazy. We'll go halfway into engineering. So when we build these walls in both these cities, then that boosts, and then we can get the aqueduct. So that should be fine. We're not really close to envoys, but we'll get one more next turn, which is nice. It is now time to put the limes card in. We got to build these walls super duper quick. We can get this card out. That's totally fine. And then I think down here, what else do I want to do? The first envoy you send to each city state counts as two might actually kick him out of Mohenjo Daro, which might be an interesting play here. Let's see if that works just for now, just as like a temporary measure. So let's do that. And then that should be six. No, it doesn't count. That kind of sucks. That kind of sucks. I thought that would add the extra one. But do you have to have the card in first? Oh man, that's lame. I've never really used that, but I thought it might be an interesting play here. With this in mind then, I think... How do I build these walls faster? Can I even get a... I can buy a builder with faith. And there is lots of chops. I just can't get to any of them. I can chop the rainforest back here. Maybe that would help me, but it might be too late by then. I think I might need to send Beowulf up. So let's move you out of the city. Yeah, you can chop for population. You're going to really quickly move to New Orleans to defend it. You're going to pillage. So for those of you who don't know how vampires work, vampires pillage by healing. So we'll just do that. Move the archer here to attack from the back. That's fine. We'll move the man at arms down. The battering ram down. The archer here to attack. And you back into the city for loyalty. Okay, I think we're working. I think we got a system that's working here. It's not ideal till we get Mohenjo Daro back, but I am going to put Baltimore here. So that works out fine. And then from there, we're going to get this. Uh, we're going to have lots of loyalty. So we'll get this and then a industry maybe. Yeah, the industry pops up. So that should be good. Monuments, fine. We rock and roll. I'm still so mad that this boat spawned over here. Like, what am I going to do with this? One of the benefits of Beowulf is you can actually use Beowulf's ability to just delete units. So as they come in, I can just delete Man at Arms, which is super helpful. And then I can hit others to lower their health. So I'm going to do that because now if you hit the city, you'll die next turn. And that should delay enough. Fingers crossed. I am going to get the builder here just in case. It should delay enough, fingers crossed, to save the city. You're going to move here. So for those of you who don't know how this works, once you get a battering ram near the city here, you will do direct damage to the walls. So and you can see is we're just really far ahead. So you got some major victory. So as we attack here, it's just going to attack the walls down. So that's perfect. And then the walls can only attack one unit. So if they're going to be picking on these archers, that's totally fine. That just means these guys will have more health to deal with, which is perfect for us. Grab the industry. Hell yeah, that's a good bit of food in production here. We're going to, I don't know if we're going to settle the rice, but we'll settle up here somewhere. This feels like a decent city. Now, hopefully we can save this city here. Hopefully this works out. And it does. I think we're safe. I think we're safe because I can move and the monumentality gives me extra movement. So I can move and I can chop for production. And that gives me the walls there. So that should be fine. For good measure, I'm going to Beowulf this guy. And then I should be able to bring Beowulf back down to this city to participate in the war again. So that'll work out. And then I want to kill this unit next to the vampire. So I'm actually going to forgo the vampire's turn to hit the city. And I'm still going to move the vampire here. Because if I kill the unit next to the vampire... Oh, you have a promotion, though. Oh, this is lame. If I kill the unit next to the vampire, I think I'm just going to eat it with the vampire. Yeah, because then the walls will run out. I'm going to eat with the vampire, then I can just move over after the walls are dead. Because this will kill the walls. So that works out. 
Works out anyway. I'll give you the volley promotion if you have the garrison one. So that worked out anyway. Things are fine. Things are all good. Aqueduct going in. And then our industrial zone will go down in three turns after the aqueduct is done. So that's perfect. And that aqueduct gives us some um, uh, adjacency bonus to the industrial zone. With regard to this man of the arms, I am slightly concerned, but I can just kind of yeet it off the map with Beowulf, which is fine. Next turn, ideally, I will be able to kill this warrior next to the vampire. It might not work out exactly like that, but that's fine. It is a little bit concerning that he's also a man of the arms. That was not super ideal. But I think we're going to be okay here because I can pillage next turn for health. But yeah, this wasn't super ideal that he's also a man of the arms at this point. Going to faith purchase a builder here to chop out this really good campus in New York. Until that goes down, though, for now, you can just work into another builder because I'll need it eventually. So I can just finish it later when I need it. I'm going to settle one off the river so I'm not right on the floodplains, but I'll grab this T as well. When I get Mohenjo-Daro back, these cities will be a lot better, I promise. All right, so you're good to move over. You're good to pillage for health. Beowulf's good to move in and attack for a minor victory, so that's okay. And then we still got the archers coming in here. They're still doing some hits. That's all good. I can't lose the... I can't realistically lose the Man of the Arms and still be okay. At the same time, I do need to hit the city pretty hard here. This is tough. This is tough. We're struggling a little bit. Man, we are so close to taking this city. This is getting dangerous. We're getting to the point that what we're doing is dangerous. Hopefully the vampire can take it next turn or I will cry. Ooh, another industry here. That'll really hold up until I can get uh, Mohenjo back. So that's totally fine. All right, he wants to make peace and it's a pretty good offer. Th 20 gold for 30 turns and a great work of writing. I say no because I want Papa Yam, but that, that was a good deal. That was a deal made in good faith. Creates with the heart. All right, so it healed 20, but I think I do roughly 20 in damage from the archers. Yeah, 21. So that's perfect. So the vampire can take. And that's okay. We got Papa Yan. We got Papa Yan. Without any casualties, you're going to back up and heal. You're going to back up and heal. We got Papa Yan. That's perfect. We are going to keep Papa Yan. I don't know if I can realistically move Magnus over, but I'm going to try. I think that worked out. I think that worked out okay. I will just go straight for Niter and keep on keeping on. And I think that's a wonderful place to leave off this video. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Just a reminder that the Civ Give is happening on December 11th. All the info for that event is in the description below. Get your donations in. That would be super helpful. Thank you so much and I appreciate it.